video, we are going to review the workflow on how you are able to import STL files to the InLab Software 22. In this video, you'll also see how you are also able to export an STL file uh, because you do need to be in a specific step uh, within the software when you do uh, import those. Now, when it comes to importing certain other file types, um, I do want to point out that when you're on the home screen, so this is the screen that's known as order management, we can see that we're on that step because it's highlighted here in that orange color where it says order management on the bottom left. Now, when we come up to the menu button on the upper left corner, it's the dense spicer on a symbol, you can see that there's an import option. So I do want to show you here that in addition to STL files, you do have the ability to import a .lab file. So that's if you are getting another file from a, uh, another in-lab user, they can send you the .lab file, which is proprietary and unique to the in-lab system. But you can also import a three shape file known as a .3si. You can also do a CIRIC DXD file or at this point a CMG.DXD. So that is the CIRIC guide file type that you get uh, within um, these software like Galileos or Sedexis. Uh, so you're able to uh, receive that file for importing to design your CIRIC guides. Um, so those are just kind of a few uh, options that you are able to import. Uh, in addition, a JAW motion file as well as a Cadent Itero file as well too. Um, now, however, when you will notice that in that import option tab, there was not the STL file. And that is because when you are importing an STL file, you do actually have to first create a new order. So on the bottom here, in order management, you'll see add new order or add new case. The main difference between the two is for add case, if you have a patient currently highlighted here, add case will add a patient file to their existing cases. So let's say Mr. Smith comes in for a crown and then you know, a year later he comes in for a splint. The idea is, is that you can continue to populate his specific patient cases by selecting add case. However, if I wanted to add in a brand new patient altogether, I can hit add order on the bottom here and it will take me to the following screen. So here uh, under the dentist name, I can whatever dentist I had highlighted, it'll default to that dentist. However, if I did need to change it here, I could, but I will just identify the patient's name. The scan date will default to today's date. If you did have an order number or you wanted to specify which technician was working on the case, you can identify those. However, the only items with the asterisks are the ones that are mandatory to fill in at this step. Now, if I were to select save order, that's simply going to save the patient's file. It will not uh, let you start an actual case at this point. So if you do want to immediately start that case, you want to hit save and add case as it will take you to the administration screen of the in-lab system. So once you are in the administration page, you will see this uh, page in front of you. <clears throat> so here we have our indications. So obviously under our restorations, we've got all the usual restorations that you'd be familiar with seeing in other softwares, including CIRIC. Now, obviously it does include things like bar abutments and bar, um, uh, the actual bar itself, because with the in-lab system, you are able to do full drug capabilities, um, not just single units or three unit crowns. Uh, then you'll also see the tab for model, partial framework, splint, tray, dentures, CIRIC guide, and Atlantis. Now, if you do not see all of these ones here, it might have to do with what uh, licenses you are currently running. OK, so obviously things like the partial framework, the splint, the tray and the dentures, they'll only show up if you have the removable module. But if you have the entire uh, in-lab software suite, you should see all of these icons here. So if I want to identify, let's say for this particular case, I'm doing a denture, I'm going to identify my upper jaw my lower jaw, and then I can just fill in my details here on the right hand side for my case details. So I'm not going to necessarily go into the details of this because there'll be other videos determining why I'm choosing what I am here. However, I do just want to fill these details in quickly here. All right, so as soon as you have everything that's needed in the case details filled in, the next step on the sidewalk will open up so we can see here it is scan. So obviously at this point in time, if you were connected to something like an NEOS X5, it's gonna automatically think that you are physically scanning with that tabletop scanner. However, this is also the step where we are able to import our STLs. So you can see here under method, I am not connected to a scanner currently, so that's why the scan st step is grayed out and the method automatically defaults to import STL. So now you can see here that I've got my object list per the type of um, restoration or prosthesis I'm designing. So in this case, being a denture, it requires the three items here, upper jaw, 
lower jaw, and some type of a bite registration or occlusion file. So here, what I'll select is where it says file path. You'll see these three dots here. I'm able to find my files that I want to import in question. So here I've got my STLs. It'll take just a moment to import that file with my upper jaw. So you can see now the file path identifies where I've imported from. And then I just do the same thing with my additional objects. So it's important for you know everyone to, to kind of realize that when you're importing an STL, it will always be from the scan step within the software. It doesn't matter if you're running software 20, software 19, software 22, it'll always run in the same format, where in the uh, instance of importing an actual physical STL file, you will do so from the scan step. Okay, so if you are connected to the NEO 6.5 tabletop scanner, you'll just change the method from scan to import STL. However, if you're not attached to the NEO 6.5, it'll automatically default to the method being STL. So as soon as we have our imported items, you'll be able to move forward as needed. Okay, so I'm gonna move forward into my model step. And at this point in time, if I was actually doing my design, um, I would carry on with my denture design at this point. However, uh, I have a separate video for designing dentures, which you can check out on our YouTube page. Um, however, I did just want to showcase to you one more additional item. Once you do get into the model step, that is also the step where you are able to export STL files or other file types as well. Um, I always recommend getting to the model phase as a minimum before you try to export your STL files. If you are sending to, let's say, a third party designer or something like that. Um, it's important to, to know where to export. Um, when you are in the scan step, you can't directly export from there because at this point in time, those STLs are still considered just raw data. So you do want to be able to get to at least the model stage because at that point in time, they've now created 3D renderings of those STL files. So it is a full file format at that point in time, uh, which is available to export accordingly. So I'll just showcase that. Uh, so in this video, we've covered at this point in time how you can import STL files as well as how you can import uh, other files like DXDs, three shape files, um, even uh, .inlab files from another inlab user. Uh, so it's a handy way to kind of know where you need to go when you are importing such cases. Um, however, we also uh, showcase in the scan step that is the only spot that you are able to import your STLs. Uh, and then let's say from here, you know, I, I scanned, I'm ready to go, or I've downloaded files from the connect portal from an intraoral scan or like prime scan uh, once i'm in the model step i can hit this dense place or in a logo and you'll see that export becomes available when you do export you'll see here that under save as type we have several cases to be able to um, export so dot lab file that would be if you are sending to another in lab user you can at this point export as a dot three se file for three shape and then stls we actually are unique we have three uh, levels of stl so we've got stl highest resolution i always recommend using that uh, STL moderate resolution and then STL reduced resolution. So reducing and moderate uh, just makes the file a little bit smaller, so a little bit less clear in terms of its resolution. And then you also do have the ability to export as STLs for Atlantis superstructures at this point in time as well too. Um, so that would be how you export STLs from the InLab system. Um, now it is worth mentioning that when you do export from this model step, it is just the models, it's just the objects that you are exporting. Uh, you would, if you were to actually go through the full design system and you wanted to export just your STLs of the design, you do have to get to the export tab here on the, uh, the top of the sidewalk, just as an FYI. Uh, so that has been the workflow of how to import STLs into InLab Software 22. Uh, stay tuned for more videos uh, on this page. Thank you so much for joining.